What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about DLC going forward for the Elder Scrolls Online. What can we expect in 2022? Before I get into all the details, be sure to check out everything down in the description. The community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky. Use code GRAVE for 5% off. Plus they have a lot of Black Friday sales going on at Empire Jerky already. Also check out Amazon Associates. That's where I link things that I use every day in gaming or making videos that you might be interested in. Check out the new merch store that is linked in the description as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that sub button. Now, when it comes to content, I think most of us kind of already expect or already know what we kind of can expect next year going forward into you know the next four quarters of DLC within the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm sure they're going to continue this kind of year-long story idea that they've been doing for the last several years. I've talked about it in the past. Other content creators and YouTubers and streamers have talked about it. Uh, Personally, I would like to see these smaller DLCs like we used to get. To me, I felt like the stories were better. I don't know. I just really enjoyed those things like the Thieves Guild, uh, the Dark Brotherhood. I thought those were really neat, small zones with great stories. Uh, these bigger uh, kind of content ideas where they do the yearly release of stuff where they have the big story and, of course, the three smaller DLCs. I think the community is kind of split personally from what I've heard. Uh, some people really like it. Some people don't. Some people look back at this year uh, with the Blackwood chapter. Some people liked it. Some people don't. I thought Zoss did a really good job. I know they had to do all this from working from home, so I was impressed. And with anybody that can do anything in the gaming industry this day and age, when you're having to work from home all in, you know, with, with everything that went on, you know, from 2019 to 2020, and some are still working from home now, I'm really impressed of what they've been able to do. Zoss did a great job, I thought, with the Blackwood chapter, with, you know, kind of what the, with what they were working with anyway. But at the same time, a lot of people said they felt disappointed with the chapter as a whole. They weren't really a big fan of Companions. Uh, you know, they weren't really a big fan of the chapter itself. Personally, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I do understand that everybody has their own opinions when it comes to, you know, kind of gaming content and games in general. I really wish that Zoss would kind of decide to swap it up and kind of do something a little bit different. I think the year-long story idea is great, but I think year after year, a lot of people feel like that it's kind of just a kind of lukewarm reception that some people like it some don't it's not really like the community is really excited about the content or the majority of the community it seems like everyone's kind of just split on it and i think if they swapped it up you know maybe one year do the year-long story of content and another year decide to do it a different way you know maybe the old way or maybe even something new that uh, zas has planned who knows but overall i think next year it's going to be an interesting one for uh, Zoss in general because I'm not sure if all of them are still working from home. It seems like a lot of times they do things, uh, you know, when they're doing some of their ESO Live, that kind of stuff. They're doing a lot of the stuff from home still. They don't seem to be at the studio. I'm not quite sure who's working where now. Uh, but at the same time, no matter really where they're at, they're still going to deliver us some really good content. And I do know a lot of people don't like having to pay for that one big story DLC every year. Not really that bad, in my opinion, considering, you know, if you get ESL Plus, you can get the other ones for free, or you can buy the other ones with money when they go on sale, because a lot of times they go on sale for cheap. You can buy them with your in-game gold if you have friends and, and guilds and things that sell crowns. So in in my opinion, it's not really that bad to spend, you know, a price once a year for, you know, one big story DLC. But I, I feel like there have been a little bit lackluster. I think Somerset was the last one that I really thought was the best, or probably was the best in general. Uh, kind of story idea they had done whereas this whole year i thought somerset was probably the best just overall and some of the other ones are, are a little bit uh, i guess they kind of leave you with a little bit um, to be desired at times they're not exactly as good as they could be i think people are kind of curious what they're going to do with the companion system will we see more companions next year some people seem to like those some don't and the one community that i really feel for is the pvp community i'm not a huge pvp player i do play some i used to play a lot more years ago than i do now but the pvp community i've seen a lot of players say they've pretty much just given up on pvp and if that's all they play they've gone on to other games and i kind of hate that because pvp in eso is really good and rich lambert lately in one of his twitch streams said that they're trying to work on that uh pvp side of the game that they're it's in the works he's not sure when it's going to be you know up and running when they can guarantee the servers are going to perform better but he said it is something they're looking into and i think they realize that that pvp community is pretty vital when it comes to eso there's tons of players that enjoy pvp content and of course you know we have pvp events during the year and it's just kind of 
hard to get into those and play if the game is not performing correctly. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know what you think. What are you expecting with next year's DLC? Are you expecting something like, um, you know, what we've seen in the past, uh, that year-long story kind of idea? Do you expect Zoss to mix it up and go with something else? Leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.